This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today, I have another special midweek video for you to enjoy. We'll be diving deep into how in situ resource utilization plays a vital role as humankind ventures out from our home world. Why is it so critical for SpaceX's plans to have humans settle permanently on Mars? Let's find out. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. In situ resource utilization, or ISRU, is the process of collecting and processing materials found on other astronomical objects like the Moon and Mars, and then turning them into something useful like water, rocket fuel, or concrete. These materials can be found in all sorts of places in one form or another. They can be ice in the polar ice caps on Mars, the regolith in the surface of the Moon, or the gases in the Martian atmosphere. We will round back to the Martian resource production in a little bit by looking into how SpaceX plans to prepare for long duration missions to Mars. With all of the resources available in the solar system and a little bit of chemistry, you can make just about anything you need to to survive on another world. Taking a look at our closest neighbour in the solar system, the Moon, we can begin to explore the potential that ISRU has for lunar exploration and colonisation. One of the most critical resources for humans to live anywhere is a sustainable source of water. On Earth, of course, this is rarely a problem, but on the Moon, it's a different story. With temperatures ranging from positive 125 degrees Celsius to negative 125 degrees Celsius, finding liquid water on the Moon is thought to be impossible. This doesn't mean that isn't water though. Numerous studies, observations and lunar probes have confirmed the presence of water in various locations in a number of forms. Scientists and space planners have long acknowledged that extended human residence on the moon would be greatly aided by the use of local resources. But what resources are there that we can harness to improve human settlement? First of all, lunar soil could be used for shielding habitats against the radiation environment. Also, most lunar rocks are about 40% oxygen, and chemical and electrochemical methods for extracting it have been demonstrated in laboratories. The solar wind has implanted hydrogen, helium, and other elements in the surface of fine grains of lunar soil that may someday serve as a resource, even if just a minimal quantity of it. They are easily released by moderate heating, but large volumes of soil would need to be processed to obtain useful amounts of the desired materials. Another interesting resource is helium-3. This is an isotope of helium that is rare here on Earth, which has been deposited on the Moon by the solar wind. Helium-3 in combination with deuterium has been proposed as a fuel for nuclear fusion reactors in the future. For the Moon, having an abundant source of energy that can survive the lunar nights that last 354 hours would be a wonderful thing. Yes, fusion technology is still a long way off, but investment into space technology and the systems that can help sustain space exploration always ends up benefiting the entire world. With many billions of dollars invested into space tech, power systems I think will begin to play a core part into that funding soon. Could that speed up the development of fusion power systems. That I can't say, but with new business opportunities comes new focus and dedication. With the richest people on the planet dreaming to expand life off-world, the future looks very positive. So diving into some interesting discoveries that have already been made regarding the presence of valuable resources on the lunar surface, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has returned an abundance of data, including the highest quality images of the lunar surface to date. The data also indicates the presence of water ice buried underneath the lunar regolith at certain locations. The Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite mission launched along with the Lunar Orbiter was directed to impact the lunar surface. Observations of the resulting 10 miles high plume showed that nearly 5% of the regolith was composed of water and another 5% contained additional volatiles including methane, ammonia, hydrogen, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. These resources, if abundant in enough quantities, can provide useful amounts of chemical components needed for fuels, fertilizers, refrigerants, purification systems, and much more. If we can obtain useful amounts, that is something we don't need to bring along. So what else is there to discover? Well, here are some current plans that NASA and other space agencies have lined up over the coming years. NASA's Lunar Surface Innovation Initiative will develop and demonstrate technologies to use the moon's resources to produce water, 
water, fuel, and other supplies, as well as capabilities to excavate and construct structures on the moon. The Volatiles Investigation Polar Exploration Rover, or Viper, is a mobile robot that will go to the lunar South Pole in 2023 to get a close-up view of the locations and concentration of water ice that could eventually be harvested to sustain human exploration on the moon, Mars, and beyond. Viper represents the first resource mapping mission on another celestial body. NASA and other space agencies are conducting international coordination of lunar polar volatiles exploration to increase scientific knowledge, to determine their viability as potential resources, and of course to use the Moon as a proving ground for Mars in situ resource utilization technologies. NASA is taking research in this area very seriously, and we've recently seen with the new Break the Ice Lunar Challenge that's designed to develop new technologies that can support a sustained human presence on the moon by the end of the decade. This is extremely exciting, I think, because it's providing incentives to industries, small businesses, and students to come up with some great concepts to address many of the challenges that we all need to solve. As a stepping stone to technology that can be used on Mars, I can't think of a better way to begin our evolution to truly becoming a multi-planet species. To live and work in deep space for months or years may mean crew members have less immediate access to life-sustaining elements and critical supplies readily available here on Earth. However, the farther humans go into deep space, especially Mars, the more important it will be to generate products with local materials. Resupply missions are expensive, and the astronaut crews become more independent on Earth to sustain their exploration as it becomes more viable. For travel in space, we need practical and affordable ways to use resources along the way, rather than needing to carry everything we think we will need well into the future. Similar to moon-based infrastructure, future Martian astronauts will require the ability to collect as many Mars-based resources as possible and then transform them into breathable air, water for drinking, hygiene products, fertilizer products, rocket propellants, building materials, and much more. The future mission objectives and capabilities will be multiplied when useful products can be created from extraterrestrial resources. Some of the the most promising space-based commodities that could enable substantial reductions in the mass, cost, and risk of human space exploration include oxygen, water, and methane. And this is also one of the main reasons why SpaceX's Starship rocket is powered by oxygen and methane. These two Starship-specific propellants can be viably produced on Mars through the Sabatia process. This process utilizes electrolysis, which splits water molecules into their two core atoms, oxygen, which can be super-chilled into the oxidizer for the star Starship vehicle, and hydrogen, which would be used for the next step of the Sabatia process. Now, with that excess hydrogen from electrolysis, you can combine it with carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere under high temperatures of 200 to 360 degrees Celsius, and with over 30 atmospheres of pressure to produce methane fuel. The Sabatia reaction is compact for long-term Martian crewed missions. This is SpaceX's approach, but NASA plans otherwise through their MOXIE experiment, or Mars Oxygen in Situ resource utilization experiment, which will prepare for future exploration. Launching on the Perseverance rover earlier this year, MOXIE will demonstrate how future Mars explorers might produce oxygen from the Martian atmosphere for propellant and breathing. So all in all, in situ resource utilization is a vital process in enabling human presence on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The process takes raw materials found on an astronomical body and turns them into something useful. Various resources are abundant on many bodies in our solar system, and with a little bit of chemistry, you can make just about anything you need to survive on another world, requiring us to only bring along what is missing. Now, I'd love to know your opinions on what we should talk about next. Along with our weekly news updates on all things space, some of these deeper topics I think can be super interesting. So to keep up to date, be sure to subscribe here and thank you all for your incredible support. Almost a quarter of a million subscribers here now. Thank you all so much. Every time you interact here with likes and comments, that just helps us to get to know you a little better. And it also allows us to engage the algorithm so we can provide this information to more of you. I hope you enjoy these topics as as much as we like making them. Now, I'd just like to say a big thank you to my sponsor Brilliant for supporting today's video. It is that time of year again, and if you're looking for a gift that nurtures creativity and develops problem-solving skills, Brilliant has just the thing for you. How about spreading the love of learning with a Brilliant premium subscription? You can help your friends or family access and understand the massive amount of math and science content available right here. With over 60 courses that combine storytelling, coding,
code writing and interactive challenges, Brilliant helps develop the skills that are crucial to school, job interviews and careers. If you know someone that loves asking why, this gift is a lifelong learning tool. It's perfect for students in middle school and up, lifelong learners that love to invest in their own personal learning journey and professionals that could benefit from better problem solving skills and added confidence to help their career. The content is continually getting refreshed too. Take this newly revamped scientific thinking course. They can open their eyes to the world around them by solving puzzles with science. They can explore the laws of physics and the principles of engineering as they learn the rules as they go. There will be plenty of surprises along the way and if they are naturally curious and they'd like to build up their problem solving skills then consider checking out Brilliant. At the same time you can also support me here by heading to brilliant.org slash Marcus House. That will give the first 200 people 20% off the first year of Brilliant Premium. The link is in the description below. A huge thank you as well to my amazing patrons here. There is no way that we can continue creating content at this frequency and length without you all. The support that you all provide here allows us to increase the time that we can spend and that is all thanks to the growing list of patrons. Thank you to each and every one of you. Seriously, it helps a great deal. As the support increases, that helps the entire team. So if you like what we're doing and you'd like to join our awesome patrons, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. That gives you access to interact with me more directly via the linked roles on Discord. You can have earlier access to the videos to watch before anyone else. You can also have your name listed right there like all of these other amazing people. Huge thanks to my team here, Brendan, Adam and Brenton assisting greatly with the video production and of course the quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for all of these videos. If you're interested in these topics and you would like to be a part of it, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today we have my video from last week with all those weekly updates. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.